Sometimes the best way to play a video game is with someone else. Be it online or on the couch, here are some of the best co-op games from 2023. These are both currently released in 2023 and upcoming 2023 game. We got 10 games, like I said, so let's get started off with number 10. This one is an obligatory mention at this point, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. We've been talking about it in a lot of top 10s recently, and that's pretty much because it's releasing soon, and we're excited to see how it goes, because it's technically the next asymmetrical multiplayer game based on a horror franchise. We've had quite a bit of those, but this one just feels like it's got a little bit more reverence for the source material. That being said, a lot of it here is cooperative, so you're either playing as the family, trying to set traps and keep the survivors inside the house, or you're playing as those survivors trying to get out, escape the basement, escape the house, escape Leatherface, and escape the farm. And of course, being a co-op game, that is going to require teamwork and communication to effectively kick the other team's ass, and maybe even scare the pants off of them. There's a lot of potential for this one, just in terms of the layout of the house. Not only is it seemingly faithfully recreated, but hopefully also just has plenty of opportunities for fun traps and hiding places. Be it the Friday the 13th one or the Evil Dead one, some people just can't get enough of this style of game, so we're looking forward to seeing how this one really turns out. It could end up like the last couple of Texas Chainsaw movies, I, I don't know, it could end up bad, but because we still really love that original movie, we're gonna hope for the best. Next over at number 9, we have Lords of the Fallen. This is the follow-up to the previous Lords of the Fallen game, but this one has got a totally different, more fantastical spin, and it seems absolutely awesome. So, Lords of the Fallen is a Souls-like game. It's very much inspired by that gameplay formula, but this time around, they're just going full heavy metal album cover art. Like, it looks absolutely awesome. The types of characters you can build, the enemies you're fighting, it seems like they're really ramping up the enemy design and all that. And the best part is that you can seamlessly play through this entire fantasy action combat RPG adventure with a friend. Yeah, it's got full co-op. Some people absolutely love playing Souls-like style games with a friend. I mean, with the challenge, a lot of people are going to need the help. I totally get it. And it seems like if you're playing with a friend, you're going to be seeing some pretty cool sights. Because again, I just think this game looks absolutely gorgeous. But hopefully it has the gameplay chops to back it up and hopefully it's even more fun with a friend. Next over at number eight, we have Starship Troopers Extermination. Yeah, the Starship Troopers have been kind of having like a gaming resurgence thing recently, and it's very, very cool. As big fans of the original movie, Starship Troopers Extermination is actually a first person shooter. Don't get this confused with the RTS one. This is a up to 16 player co-op FPS where you're playing as deep space vanguard troopers fighting off hordes and hordes of bugs. Yes, it's kind of like an alien horde shooter. And in early access, it seems like people on Steam are really loving it. It's got positive reviews and it just seems like a fun gameplay loop of sh shooting hordes of bugs, retaking and rebuilding bases, managing resources, doing a lot of stuff you'd actually expect in an RTS, but in first-person action combat style. There are different character classes, a bunch of different weapons, and it seems to kind of embrace the absurdity of the classic Paul Verhoeven movie, which that's all I really want, personally. Uh, this did release in May. It seems like it's still going strong, like I said, as very positive on Steam, so consider checking it out. Off-World Industries, the developer publisher, knows what they're doing. Next over at number 7, we have The Outlast Trials. This is an easy recommendation because it's the next Outlast game, which is already awesome, but it's also a cooperative Outlast game. You're doing Outlast-style stuff, but with friends. But there's a little bit more to it now. It's not just running and hiding from scary things. You're coordinating with friends, and you're also working through these Cold War-era trials. So there's a bit more variety to everything you're doing, and also a bit more variety to just, like, the gameplay scenarios, the spookiness, the scares, the over-the-top gore, all that Outlast stuff is still there, but it's a bit different now, and it does feel different when you're playing with other people, but it's still worth checking out. People are absolutely loving it right now, and we've been mentioning it on some top 10s because I'm like, sorry, we didn't get a chance to do before you buy on this one, we didn't have time. It seems like it's been such a long wait since the last Outlast game, so for some people, that, that's all you need, but now you can do it with a friend. Next over at number 6, we have Remnant 2, the follow-up to Remnant from the Ashes. Some people would call this kind of like a Dark Souls with guns. I don't totally agree with that, but it's an easy way to throw it out there, like it sounds cool. Essentially, this is a third-person shooter with some pretty in-depth loot and character build-out and progression RPG-style stuff, and you're progressing through levels 
fighting enemies, but a lot of those levels and instances are randomly generated, so everybody's gonna have a little bit of a different experience, and this time around it really ties into the story. So you might be playing on PlayStation 5 and you're talking to your friend that's been playing alone on PC, and they may have encountered a boss or an area and even a little sub-story in a completely different place than you did or a different time in the game. So alone you're gonna have different experiences, but teaming up together, you're gonna have a lot of fun just shooting enemies because the animations are cool, the enemies are pretty compelling looking, and the shooting is solid. Whether you're fighting with like a repeater or an auto shotgun or a high powered flame bullet pistol, there's all kinds of cool stuff with the weapons. The melee has a little bit more of a satisfying impact to it now and it's just fun to play. There's a reason why Remnant from the Ashes was kind of like an underrated hit. People who love that game absolutely love the hell out of that game, and it seems like that's gonna be the case with Remnant 2. I expect this one to have legs. And this is one where you can play completely solo, but I really, really recommend playing it with a friend. It just makes it that much more fun. Next over at number five, we have Nightingale. This is a really interesting one. While it has your typical survival elements like crafting and base building, and hunting for resources. It's the unique environment and presentation here. I, I actually, it has multiple unique environments because you're this person who's a realm walker and you're traveling through these portals looking for the city of Nightingale. And even without the portal stuff, the game just looks like a lot of fun. You're building up your own estate and you're recruiting NPCs to help you with resource gathering and production. That's the survival stuff that a lot of people find addicting, but the combat seems awesome. You're using a variety of melee weapons and guns in first-person combat, and you're doing it with friends, of course. But the look of the characters and the way they're built out just seem kind of cool and quirky and a little bit different, and we've had our eye on this one for a while. Early impressions from, like, previews and stuff have been pretty strong, and the developers sound like they're aiming to release the game in early access by the end of 2023, and we're looking forward to checking this out, because we talk about survival games a lot here, and there are so many of them, and you know, we get tired of them after a while, but Nightingale has been stuck in our head because it just seems a bit different, from the vibes to the way it all rolls out. We're gonna be checking this one out when it does drop in early access, and we're gonna be playing it with each other. Next over at number four, we have Helldivers 2. Of course, we had to mention this one. You're the Helldivers, these elite soldiers fighting for freedom, taking out these alien bugs on strange worlds with cool weapons in third-person shooting combat. So there is a big change up from the original game, but people love the original game, and it seems like they're carrying over a lot of the same philosophies here. So even if a shift to third person isn't what everybody necessarily wanted, I just like the attitude they have here. The on-screen chaos seems absolutely ramped up and you're going to be constantly calling down all sorts of resources and bombs and airstrikes and fun stuff, uh, but the co-op stuff is really interesting. The developers are saying this is their best co-op gameplay yet. Teams are going to apparently be able to take advantage of like synergies, like having different loadouts that complement one another uh, and kind of strategize around that for each mission, but the biggest thing that the developers have touted about co-op gameplay is that friendly fire is always on. So amidst the chaos and you blowing up and mowing down hordes of bugs, you need to make sure that you're not blowing up your allies or, or, or mowing them down with a Gatling gun. It sounds like it's gonna make room for lots of chaos and we're excited to see that. As of right now, it is slated for 2023, no exact release date yet, but for PC and PlayStation. Now down to number three, I mean, we had to mention Diablo 4. It's been out for a while now, a couple weeks, and people were initially really loving it. Uh, after some updates and some nerfing, uh, people have taken issue with it. But overall, from launch and hopefully after they fix this, the foundation is strong because there's a big, huge world to explore with tons of dungeons, tons of loot, and also really cool presentation and vibe to the whole thing. And it's great to experience with a friend. With all the different classes, everybody can roll with a pretty unique style character, even if you're both rolling as barbarians. The amount of weapon variety and build variety means that you can both be your own special character with your own special use case. There's a lot of power to that stuff, and it just makes Diablo 4 feel really strong. Whether it's going through some troubles right now, we hope they really fix it. And with the seemingly years worth of content they're going to start rolling out, it seems like it's going to do what Diablo is supposed to do. It's supposed to be that game that you kick back and play with a buddy since the older days. And with seemingly like the, the lengthy roadmap, like the years of content they're going to roll out, we're hoping that Diablo 4 just kind of is cemented as like it is with the previous Diablo games, just a game that you keep returning to. You kick back and play with your buddies. 
Now down to number two, speaking of playing with your buddies, Payday 3 is dropping this year. And I mean, it's the third game in the franchise. It's like one of the most popular cooperative shooters ever. The bank heist gameplay just keeps bringing people back. And this time around, it's got crazy looking graphics, cool presentation, a New York City that actually looks pretty damn good and, and just kind of way more going on here. From what we've seen, it's hard to judge exactly, but uh, more options, more ways to engage with the world and hostages and then to engage with the police and to escape. There's a bit of a story with like the Payday crew after the previous game being dragged back into the fold once again and they have to rob and steal for a reason. But apparently this time around, there's going to be way more earning money, spending it on stuff upgrading, customizing your characters, weapon proficiencies, skills, all those types of things. And again, A-Day is the best when you're doing it all with a group of buddies. You can live out your heist movie fantasy. Communication is key in these games and that's what makes it so special. Also, it's just cool and fun to rob banks in the virtual world because obviously you can't do it in real life. A-Day 3 is also going for a pretty interesting model. They're not releasing it as a full price game. It's dropping for like $40 in the US and that's a deliberate strategy by the publishers and I'm curious to see how that works out. Hopefully it's worth it. We'll know for sure when we play it September 21st, 2023. Now down to number one, we have Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 has been in early access for a long time, but it's finally getting its big final release at the end of this summer. And it seems like it's gonna kick ass. From the early access, it seems like it is a massively ambitious RPG set in the Dungeons and Dragons universe with all the rules, with all the gameplay stipulations, with the character types that come with that, but also just tons to do and the fact that you can do it cooperatively. Larian makes some great RPGs. I mean, Divinity Original Sin 2 was such a great game to play with other people. So we expect nothing less with Baldur's Gate 3. It seems like it's gonna be a big game, both like with the hype, but also like the amount of content in it and the amount of times you're gonna play it. We hope Baldur's Gate is worth the trip and definitely worth a trip with a friend. Those are 10 new and upcoming 2023 co-op games that we wanted to recommend, but we got two games we couldn't fit in the main list. So here in the bonus section, we have Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game. We already talked about one asymmetrical horror multiplayer game in the list with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So we still wanted to mention Killer Clowns because we've said it before. We still can't believe they're actually making a game based on this weird movie. Still, maybe that's worth checking out, especially for some old school movie fans. And also, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. It's a weird one to recommend for co-op, but not really. If you think about it, if you're running around levels as Mario and Luigi running and jumping and doing things, it counts, in my mind. Really excited to see how that one goes down when it drops in the fall. But, like I said, those are 10 or so cooperative games, new ones, and upcoming ones for 2023. So, let us know what you think of these, but also let us know of some of the ones that we couldn't include, because I know they're out there. So let us know what you're looking forward to the most. Let us know if you do play with friends. Let us know anything at all down in the comments. If you like what we do here, we talk games every single day. If we keep you entertained or informed, clicking the like button helps us out. That's all you gotta do. We very much appreciate that. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.